Hey, where are you right now? Why aren't you at home? Do you know what time it is? Yo, you alive over there? Answer me ASAP. Oh, hey, Andrew. I'm sorry I didn't get your text earlier. I had to rush out of the house and didn't have time to tell you about this. I just went to pay the hospital bill and forgot to bring my phone, so I didn't realize how late it was. I asked you a question, damn it. Where are you? And what are you doing to leave the house in such a mess? Wait, you said that you paid the hospital bill? What happened? I'm out of town with my mom at the hospital right now. Earlier today, I was doing laundry when the hospital called to tell me that my mother had been in a car accident on her way to the market. Her condition is serious, so I drove straight there and forgot to text you. I'm sorry. What? Your mom was in a car accident? Did they catch the driver? No, unfortunately, the driver fled the scene. The police said it would be difficult to find him because he used a fake license plate. It was still noon with a few people passing by, so there were no witnesses too. Luckily, a police car patrolling found my mother lying unconscious on the ground, so they took her to the hospital. Oh my god. How is her condition? Is she going to be okay? Her condition is very serious. The doctor said she had a broken leg, abdominal injuries, and a traumatic brain injury. They also found a tumor in her brain that could stop blood flowing to her brain. She needs surgery immediately, but the success rate is only 5%. If she doesn't have surgery, she might not survive more than three days. That's awful. What about the hospital bill? Is it very expensive? I'm not sure yet, but I had to pay $2,000 as a deposit. I have my debit card with me, so you don't need to worry about it. What? That's what I was most afraid of. You took my money to pay for your mother without my permission. She's just a stranger. How dare you? This is my mother we're talking about, not some stranger. Besides, it's not just your bank card. My salary's on that card too. Your salary? What are you talking about? You're just a lowly housewife. Where do you get a salary when you just stay home and lounge around doing nothing all day? I pay for everything in this family. You can't just take my money without asking for my permission like that. Are you serious, Andrew? Do you need to know whose money is whose right now? My mother's life is at stake and all you care about is money? Why are you so heartless? Hey, don't talk to me like that. I do care about your mother. It's just that she's going to die with or without surgery. Besides, the police couldn't catch the culprit of this accident, so we can't make him pay for the hospital bill. So why waste thousands of dollars on useless hospital bills? Do you want to lose your mother and run out of money at the same time? We should let her die in peace instead of enduring such pain. You... I can't believe you can utter such cruel, inhumane, and ungrateful words. How much did my mother help you? Have you forgotten? Since you left home to go to university, it was my mother who helped you because she knew your family's finances were not good. And because your mother and mine were close friends, she's always loved and treated you well. My mother gave you food and a roof above your head cooked you delicious dishes you like, and even found a job for you, and helped you get to the success you are today. And now you're saying to let my mother die? Oh, please. Don't keep recalling those memories to make me feel guilty and repay your mother. I've repaid her already, so I have no responsibility for her anymore. Huh? Repay her what? She never asked you for anything. Oh, come on. I married you. I sacrificed my life to marry you. Isn't it enough? If it weren't for me, no one would ever marry a lowly, lazy, and worthless person who was raised by a single mom like you. Andrew, do you know what you're talking about? Are you saying that marrying me is to repay my mother? Obviously, you were chasing me the other day, right? You even said you love me. Why are you talking like you only married me out of pity? How can you look down on me, saying I'm useless? I'm only telling the truth. Look at yourself. Do you think that you deserve to have me? Hey, don't forget that you and I used to work in the same company. But when the CEO was considering us both for promotion, it was you who convinced me to quit because you wanted someone to take care of the family. I listened to your wish, and finally that promotion opportunity belonged to you. You know I'm not worthless like you say. So what? That still won't change your lowly background. What's wrong with being raised by a single mom? My mother raised me, working late hours after my dad left. She did her best for me and was always by my side. Yes, exactly. 
I know all about how you were raised by a single mom who had to do the lowest jobs, from janitor to waitress, to raise you. I'm sure that must have been terrible. But now, your mom can thank me. I've given you an enjoyable life, every day. And all you have to do is very simple tasks that even a kid can do. And the only other thing I ask of you is to prepare three fresh and delicious meals for me every day. That's all. What more do you expect from me? What is that supposed to mean? I'm not at home enjoying myself as much as you think. Each day I do housework from early morning until late at night. Do you think the house can clean itself? Will your clothes iron themselves and get in the washing machine by themselves? And cooking for you isn't easy either. Because you only eat hot and fresh food, not food from the refrigerator. And the menu has to change constantly. Not within two weeks. So every day I spend a lot of time going to the market and thinking of a menu for you. It's not as easy as you think. Oh, don't try to convince me that you're important in this house. Do you want a medal for what you're supposed to do? And of course, I won't accept eating cold food or something that was prepared the previous day. I'm the breadwinner of the house. I deserve to be fed the best and have fresh food every day. Why didn't I see anything when I came home? Do you know how tired I am after working all day long? And everything I want is just a delicious dinner. And you can't even do that for me. Andrew, as I said, I was running late. So I couldn't prepare anything for you yet. I'll be staying in the hospital with my mom tonight, so I probably won't be going home. Can you go out to eat or order food to take home? There are many good restaurants around our house. You're not getting it. Oh, you're so dumb. I'm not asking your opinion on where I should eat. I'm asking you why you didn't make my dinner before you left the house. It's your duty as my wife to satisfy my needs before leaving the house. I don't want to talk with you anymore. Come back here and cook me dinner. And then you can go wherever you want. But tomorrow, when I wake up, my breakfast better be ready on time. But I'm at the hospital out of town. And it takes two hours to drive here. Even if I go home now, it's already midnight, not counting the cooking time. Wouldn't it be a waste of time to drive between two locations? Can you sympathize with me and order food delivered for these days? I want to be with my mother for as long as I can. Maybe for a few days. Oh, come on. Don't be so squishy and emotional. Just leave her there. She won't die right away. The doctors and nurses are already taking care of everything. You won't be able to help her there. Come back here and take care of me, so I can continue to earn money for your mother's hospital stay. How could you be so cruel? That's my mother! Know very well that she was my only family and that we were very close. How can you be so uncaring? Why are you looking down on this, on her? She's important to me. I would not let her alone suffering all that pain. I should be your top priority. You chose to marry me and be my family. Don't you know your place in this house? You're just a maid. You serve me. Please, can't you just overlook this one time? I don't want to miss any moments with her. She may not have much time left. Can you please just show some sympathy and try to look at things from my perspective just this once? I just want some understanding and some support from you at this time. That's all. It's a hard day for me. Please, I don't know if I'm asking you too much, but can you come here with me for a while? I think I'm gonna fall down. Huh? Why should I go there? Don't think that I'll waste my precious time driving there. I still have to go to work tomorrow. And don't be too sad about this. You need to get used to the fact that your mother is going to pass away. She's dying anyway. I'll tell you first. I won't let you spend my money on useless things like surgery for her. How could you say that, Andrew? My mother needs this surgery to have a chance to survive. How can you be so heartless and deny her the chance to live? Don't be ridiculous, woman. We can't afford to waste money on unnecessary things like surgery. She's gonna die anyway, so there's no point in prolonging her suffering. How can you say that? She's my mother. The only family I have left. I can't just sit here and watch her die. And how can you talk about money at a time like this? This is about her life. Don't you dare talk to me with an insolent tone like that. You need to be realistic. We have bills to pay and a life to live. We can't just throw all our money away on something that may not even work. 
I can't believe you're being so selfish and heartless. This is my mother's life we're talking about, not some frivolous expense. And how can you expect me to just go on with my life as if nothing is happening? Andrew, I've made a decision. I'm going to give my mother the surgery regardless of what you say. I won't touch a single penny of yours. I will work hard to earn the money needed to pay for the surgery. What? Are you insane? Do you have any idea how much that will cost? And you're going to take on that kind of debt without even consulting me first? Wake up! This is real life. Miracles don't happen. Your mother has no chance of surviving. Oh, how can you be so cold and heartless? This is my mother we're talking about. I don't care about the cost. I'm willing to do whatever it takes to save her life. You're being reckless. We can't afford to spend that kind of money, especially not on a lost cause like your mother. My mother is not a lost cause. And even if she was, I would still want to try and save her. She's the only family I have left, and I can't just stand by and watch her die without doing everything in my power to save her. Andrew, I can't believe you would try to stop me from saving my own mother's life. I'm going to do this, with or without your support. You're so stubborn. You know what? Do what you want. But don't come crying to me when you realize you've made a huge mistake. I won't, because I know in my heart that I'm doing the right thing. Andrew, where are you? I desperately need your help. I can't handle all of this alone. Why should I help you? You always make rash decisions without thinking about the consequences. This is all your fault, and you should deal with it on your own. <laughs> this is probably the best time to say I told you so. How can you say that? My mother just died. I never expected you to pay for the surgery fees or anything. I just need your support and presence at her funeral. Is that too much to ask for my husband? Your mother's death is not my problem. Plus, I have work to do, Maria. I can't just drop everything and come running to your rescue every time you need me. You should have thought about that before you went ahead with the surgery for your mother. I didn't have a choice, Andrew. She needed that surgery to live, and unfortunately things didn't go as planned. But that's besides the point now. I need you to be here for me as my husband and as someone who cares about me. You can't just expect me to drop everything and rush to your side whenever you want me to. I can't believe you're being so heartless. I thought you loved me and cared for me, but I guess I was wrong. Don't play the victim here. You're the one who's neglecting your duties as a wife and as a homemaker. Look at the mess you've left the house in. And you expect me to drop everything and come running to your side? You can't just leave the housework and my needs unattended to. What do you mean, neglecting my duties? I am trying to arrange a funeral. Andrew, I don't have time to clean the house right now. Stop being so dramatic. Your mother's death doesn't mean you get a free pass to neglect your responsibilities. You're always putting yourself in these situations without thinking about the consequences. I can't believe you're saying this to me. You're my husband. The person I'm supposed to be able to count on, and you're not even willing to be there for me when I need you the most. Can't you see what's happening here? My mother just died, and you're more concerned about the housework? How, how can you be so heartless? I can't deal with your emotional outbursts right now. You should have taken care of the house before you left, Maria. It's not my job to pick up after you. As a housewife, it's your job to ensure that everything is functioning and organized in the house. But look at you. You left the house without doing your chores for some funeral. I told you, it's my mother's funeral. She did not survive during surgery, and I am the only one who can organize this. If I don't do it, then who will? What do you mean by some funeral? It's my mother's funeral. Do you really think that it's okay to say some funeral to my mother's funeral, knowing how important she was to me? Yeah, yeah, I got it. But you could have made some of the arrangements by phone, or delegated the work to someone else, then gone home and cleaned it up and prepared the meals. How can you be so callous? Once again, this is my mother's funeral we're talking about. How can you act like it's no big deal? Why are you acting like it's got nothing to do with us? Do you have no heart whatsoever? 
and the ceremony will be held at 3 p.m. today. When will you show up? Nah, I'm not going to the funeral. I'm really busy today and have scheduled a business trip this afternoon. This is a very big contract, so I can't skip it to be bothered with your family drama. Andrew, please, can't you reschedule your business trip? It's my mother's funeral. I need you there with me. She's gone forever. You can't even spare a few hours to support me? This is the last time for us to say goodbye to her before she's cremated. Spare me the drama, Maria. I don't have time for this sentimental nonsense. You're just trying to guilt me into going, but it's not going to work. I have a lot of important meetings that I can't reschedule. You should have thought about this before you decided to have your mother's funeral today. What do you mean, Andrew? It's not like I chose this day. It's the day that the funeral home had available. Well, that's not my problem. I have a business trip to go on, and I can't just drop everything because of a funeral. Well, I'm not going. End of story. I have more important things to do than waste my time at a funeral. But Andrew, this is my mother's funeral. I need you there with me. You're my husband, and you should be there to support me for God's sake. Today is a very important day for me. It's not easy to handle my mom's death and also take care of all the procedures. You're being unreasonable, expecting me to drop everything for you. Please, Andrew, I'm begging you. You don't understand how much it means to me to have you there with me. I can't do this alone. You're being selfish, expecting me to put my life on hold for you. You need to accept that your mother is gone and move on. I have to go now. Don't expect me to come back in time for the funeral. Andrew, please don't do this to me. I need you here with me today. You're my husband, and you're supposed to be there for me in good times and bad. Okay, enough. You're so annoying. I'll try to come if I can, okay? Now buzz off. I have work to do. Yes, I'll be waiting for you. I believe that you won't let me down. Hey, where the hell are you? The funeral ended yesterday. Why haven't you come home yet? The house smells like a rotting corpse. Why haven't you cleaned up yet? I can't stand this stench anymore. And let me tell you, I'm pissed off. I'm sorry. I just needed some time alone to grieve for my mother. Time alone? Did you leave me to deal with the aftermath of the funeral all by myself? That's not fair. You should have been here to help me clean up this mess. Yesterday, you didn't come to the funeral. Yeah? So what? I told you that I had to go on a business trip. But it was my mother's funeral. I even begged you to come here. I was busy. You know it. But I didn't promise to come. I said I would try. Obviously, I couldn't make it. I had too many customers to meet. And your mother's place was too far to go just for a few hours. Busy... Busy, busy. You always say you're busy. Yesterday, my old colleagues at the company came to the funeral. I asked them if the company had arranged for you to go on a business trip, but they said you took a day off to go to my mother's funeral. Yet you didn't show up. What happened? Don't you dare question me, Maria. How dare you go behind my back and ask my colleagues about my work? You're just a housewife. You have no right to interfere with my job. You keep saying that, but please tell me. Why did you have to lie to me like that? All right, it's what you want to know. I didn't want to go there and see your aunts. They are so noisy and always crowding me to ask for a loan. It's annoying. Your family bloodline is really ugly, you know? How can you be so heartless? My mother just passed away and you didn't even bother to show up. And now you insult my family? How could you say that? Oh, please. Your family's nothing but a burden to me. Your aunts are always trying to mooch off of me, and I'm sick of it. And let's be honest, your family's not exactly the most attractive. It's not my fault you come from a line of ugly people. You're despicable. Why do you keep looking down on me and my family like that? You think you're more prestigious and better than me just because you got the promotion I gave you? How dare you talk to me like that? What would you know, you lowlife? 
And where the hell are you now, damn it? I am at my mother's house. I am cleaning her house. What the hell is that? Why are you cleaning an abandoned house for the dead? Come back to our house and clean it. Yesterday I cooked spaghetti, but I wasn't careful, so I burned it all and spilled it on the floor. Also, the toilet is clogged, and it's pouring water out here. I ran out of clothes to wear to work, too. Can't you just do these simple things right? Why do I have to do all this? You keep saying that I'm a stupid housewife who just enjoys doing these basic tasks, right? So why can't a talented man with a noble job like you do these simple things? You can't lose to someone as incompetent as me, can you? That's because I'm the breadwinner of this household, obviously. I'm the one who puts food on the table. I'm the one who makes money for you to buy clothes to dress up in. I see. But it seems that without me, you wouldn't be able to do anything. You can't even make a simple spaghetti for yourself. Don't you think that you depend on me a lot? A man can't get his hands on such lowly jobs. That's women's business. You need to come back here at once to fulfill your responsibilities. <laughs> well, I think it makes more sense for you to show respect to me. Instead of giving orders, ask for help with the magic word please in every sentence. Something bad is bound to happen if you keep talking down to me like this. By the way, from tomorrow, I won't be a useless housewife anymore. On the day of the funeral, the director of the company met with me privately and suggested that I return to work as a department head. He said he always regretted that I took a sudden leave that year. So when he heard me talking to a colleague about wanting to go back to work to pay for my mother's surgery, he suggested me, and I agreed. Looks like I'm not just a worthless wife, like you say. What? Why didn't you ask me? I already agreed. There's no way this is real. I've been trying for years to get promoted to that position. Reject the director now. Otherwise, you'll regret it. What did I do wrong? If you don't follow my orders, we're getting a divorce. I've already drawn up and signed the divorce papers, so think carefully. So that's how it is then. Divorce is your suggestion to this situation. But if you obediently decline that offer and beg me to forgive you, and go back to being a useless housewife as usual, then maybe I'll reconsider this. You will forgive me? Well, I'm not the devil. So I can show some mercy and forgive you for your faults and stupidity, but only when you plead with me and apologize for your mistakes. I might forgive you and let you be a useless housewife like before. So, what do you think? You expect me to apologize and beg for forgiveness? That's not happening. Divorce is the only way forward. What? You want a divorce? Of course. How could you even think that I would want to stay with you after what you did? Are you crazy? You didn't show up during the days my mother was in the hospital. You even wanted to leave my mother to die without any treatment. The moment you didn't show up to my mother's funeral, you were dead to me. I was devastated and realized how stupid I was to have ever believed you would come. My mind is all made up. We are going through with a divorce, positively. Hey, watch your mouth. Why should I? We're going to be total strangers soon anyway. It's about time I gave you a piece of my mind. Especially after all the horrible things you've said to me about my mom and I. So shut up and leave the documents on the table. I will sign them and take them to City Hall when I get back home. Hey, hey, let's calm down a bit. Why? I think I'm perfectly calm. Seems like we have both made up our minds and want to file for divorce. Let's do it. There's no point in waiting. Wait, but I'm the only family now. We don't have kids, and now your mother is dead. You're going to be very lonely, you know. I'm totally fine with that. I have friends and aunties, and I don't mind a quiet house. Wait, wait, don't be so harsh. There's no need to get so angry just over a funeral. Come on, who's more important to you in the family? Me or your mother? <laughs> what kind of question is that? <laughs> Obviously, it's my mother. And one more thing. You're not my family anymore. What? I said you're not my damn family, you cretin. I thought I was being nice trying to give you a chance to apologize. And this is what you do? Huh? Lash out and disrespect me? You're such an ungrateful dog. 
Yeah, because I lived with a son of a bitch. Just leave the documents on the table and I will get to them when I'm back to pack my stuff. Bye. Forever. As I signed the divorce papers and left the lawyer's office, I felt a sense of relief wash over me. I knew it wouldn't be easy moving on from the pain and hurt Andrew had caused me, but I was determined to start a new chapter in my life. Months later, I had moved on and was happier than ever. I had moved to a new city, made new friends, and even found a new job. I was happy and content, enjoying the freedom that came with being single. Years went by. I had found love again. I had met a kind and loving man who cherished me for who I was. We got married and I felt truly blessed to have found happiness again. I couldn't believe how much better it was without Andrew. Meanwhile, Andrew's life had taken a turn for the worse. Days turned into weeks and Andrew's hatred only grew stronger. He started drinking heavily and became increasingly aggressive towards his colleagues and friends. His behavior became so erratic that he was eventually fired from his job. He had lost his job, his friends had distanced themselves from him, and he was constantly alone. With no job, no friends, and no wife, Andrew was left alone to stew in his anger and misery.